Welcome to another episode of In The Zone. You're really gonna enjoy this one. We have Hall of Famer Clyde Drexler right here in studio. Tremendous interview. You know, this is the guy everybody blames the Portland Trailblazers for, for not drafting Michael Jordan because they had Clyde Drexler, so they went with a big man, Sam Bowie. But Drexler tells us a great story of how he actually wanted them pleaded for them to draft Michael Jordan so he could play with Jordan. He thinks they would have revolutionized the NBA. Tremendous story from Clyde and many more about his battles with Jordan, about the dream team in 92, about this year's Houston Rockets. He gave us some tremendous stuff. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned and check it out. <laughs> it is my pleasure an honor to welcome the great Clyde Drexler into the zone. Thanks for coming. Delighted to be here with you. Oh, man. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I don't want to make you feel old, but I remember watching you with Five Slamma Jamma. I was in high school. Oh. So that's not that much of a difference. I'm high school, you were college. So that's not that we're bad. We're the same age. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, uh, y'all were legendary, you know. And I, I have to ask you this. Um, with the NCAA tournament just last week. Uh, what does that, that loss to NC State, do you, how often do you think about that? Does that still eat at you? Uh, never, only when people ask. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great moment in time. Uh, some of the best basketball ever. Uh, early 80s was a golden era. Yeah. Some of the best players to ever played the game came out during that time. And, and that game, the one you're referring to, North Carolina State, yep. University of Houston, Five Slam Jamma, yeah. well, it was legendary because, you know, the best team did not win. Yeah. Jimmy Valvano won. He went on to do a lot of things for cancer research, raised a ton of money, and uh, the Wolfpack won that game. But if they didn't win that game, we wouldn't know who he was. No, no question. <laughs> you're about. right. So it, in the grand scheme, it really worked out. It was meant right. to happen. Because they were fortunate to even get in the tournament. They won about three or four games the exact same way they beat us. They beat wow. Virginia twice. With, Sam, with Samson. With Samson, Samson. The exact same way. Wow. Now, did you guys take them lightly? Uh, no, not at all. Okay, because you had beat Louisville, I believe, in the which semifinal. was a great team. Yeah, in the final Louisville was a really good team. Yeah. Doctors of Dunk. Yep. Yep. Rodney McRae, Scooter McRae, uh, Denny Crum, and those guys were the, the, bi the big cheese. Yeah. And uh, that was supposed to be the clash of the Titans. And so the Saturday game was a big, big game. We ended up winning. But the Monday game, I mean, we were ready. Okay. We wanted to win the whole thing. We had been to the Final Four the year before. Getting there was not enough. We wanted to win the whole thing. Yeah. So we did not take them lightly. Wow, wow. <laughs> well, I have to ask you before we get started, you, your jersey – we only have a few jerseys in the zone. It, it was, I, I'm guessing this is not your favorite looking jersey of your career? Uh, that was uh, <laughs> one year. After we won the NBA Finals in 95, they came up with the uh, new jersey. And uh, it, it's got a beautiful little rocket on it. <laughs> <laughs> Were y'all like, one what? year. <laughs> But it was, you know, they, they changed a lot of uniforms back then. That was before the retro fits, the throwbacks. Yeah, 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 and so yeah. that was the beginning of it. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, Houston with NASA, the space program, and the rockets. So it, it worked out. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what was it like? I want to go back to Houston, just for University of Houston for a little bit. What was it like to see a young Hakeem, Hakeem at that point, Hakeem Olajuwon? Mm -hmm. Uh, playing at, at Houston. The that's development a, must have been incredible. That's a good question. Uh, he, he was um, 6'11", 195 when he first got wow. to the University of Houston. And from that point on, he just continued to work, 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 add weight, work, work, work. But he had guys like Moses Malone uh, helping him. He had guys like Guy Lewis, who's one of the best big man teachers in the really? college game. Okay. He was the kind of, he went to the right coach. Guy Lewis thought, if you're 6'10", 6'11", 7 feet, I can teach you to become a dominant post player. And he thought that about every big guy. So if you give me a big guy, I can show him. And so Hakeem got lucky that he had that type of coach. So you think some coaches may not have been as patient. If he had gone to a guard-oriented coach, it would, probably would have been a different story. Wow. 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 So, you know, God is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he I, – because I remember his first year, you know, just – Within a year, he turned into this All-American player because his first year he well, struggled a little first bit. First year he redshirted. Okay. And then the first year he actually played, 
He was a good defender, good rebounder, but he struggled offensively. He traveled a lot. He couldn't yeah, really yeah. throw it to him. And then the next year, which was my junior year, which was when we lost to NC State, that's when his game began to blossom. Okay. And he started making jumpers, started learning the footwork with Moses Malone, Coach Guy Lewis. Yeah. All of that stuff started to kick in through three years of intensely hard work. What was it like for you to reunite with him with the Houston Rockets? It was phenomenal because he's my brother. I mean, we had college history. Uh, we were good friends in college. And then to get back, uh, I tell you, in Portland, I'm in Portland. I'll, I'll give you a quick story. Okay. 1984 draft. I'm in Portland. Michael Jordan, Hakeem Olajuwon, Sam Bowie. Portland has the right to, to flip for the first pick with the Rockets. So they get the call, head to tail. You get the call, head to tail. You're, you're Portland. They lose the flip, so you don't get Hakeem Olajuwon, yeah. who's supposed to be you know, the obvious number one pick. So now they say, well, we need a big guy because at two guard, we got Jim Paxson, John Paxson, excuse me, who's a, who's a pretty good player, All-NBA second team. Yeah. And they had drafted me the year Was before. he second time All-NBA? In 1982. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, and then, okay. And, and then they drafted me. Well, you and but you were were you the two or the three? I mean, obviously I played one, two, switched. and three. Yeah, but they looked at me everything. as a two guard. Okay. And then they had Jeff Lamp, who was the number one yeah. pick three years before that. So they yeah. had a lot of three guys at the two, and so they they had no big man. They had Michael Thompson, who was the number one pick yeah. in '78. Yeah. And so they thought they needed a seven footer, to complete that team. Back then, because this is Jack Ramsey. Yeah. He won with who? Bill Walton. Yeah. Maurice Lucas. So he had to have those big guys. And so that was their thinking back then. They didn't think about dominating with six, seven guys. Did you feel like at, at the time it was a mistake to oh, draft Bowie over Jordan? Michael Thompson and I put an ad, I mean, an article in the paper. If Michael Thompson, who was way ahead of his time, he says that if Portland drafts Michael Jordan, he said him and Clyde will dominate this league for the next 15 years. Really? And I think the team called him in and, and threatened to fine him if he continued with that rhetoric. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's how. Uh, wow. And you felt the same way. Oh, absolutely. How could you not pick him? Now, how did you, did you know Jordan? You played against him. I did not know you him. Did. I played against him in 82 semifinal. Okay. North Carolina versus Houston. That's when, was he, was he a? He, he was, was a freshman. A, I he was, was a as a freshman the year they won. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so I knew he was a pretty good player. And then, you know, if I had stayed in college, I would have been a senior. The 84 Olympic team, Bobby Knight sent me a letter saying, I want you and Jordan to head my Olympic team in 84. Okay. But I ended up going to the NBA. And All so right. we knew Jordan was, was a great player. There was no doubt. And so Michael Thompson and I were, were saying, you got to pick this guy. Regardless of positions or who you have, you need good players. Yeah. What – I'm just going to ask you to indulge us. <laughs> if Jordan, if they do pick Jordan, what do you think history is looking like right now? Well, if, if they pick Jordan, things are a little bit different. But in Sam Bowie's uh, defense, he was a very he was talented, a great very yeah, talented yeah, big yeah. guy. Just couldn't get healthy. He could play. Yeah. It wasn't like he was a lemon. The guy could play. Yeah, He yeah. just couldn't get healthy. You and Jordan were the two best wing players at, of that era. Um, what was it like to compete against him? Oh, he's a phenomenal competitor. You know, when you love the game and you play to compete, when you play players like that, you don't have to do anything to get up for the game. You're so psyched. The yeah. moment I wake up, I'm ready. Yeah. And, yeah. But, you know, it's hard playing the teams with, that are a little subpar or players who, you know, you don't have to get a whole lot of rest for. <laughs> yeah. But players you know are good, I mean, that's what you live for. So it was, it was a treat. <laughs> that, that 90, was it 92 when you guys played them in the finals? We played the Bulls in 92. Uh, I think that was my uh, tenth, ninth or tenth year in the league. Yeah. And uh, it was a good final. Um, Bulls had a really good team. I think they ended up winning like three years in a row. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the the storyline became that Jordan was going at you. I, <laughs> would, did you finish ahead of him in MVP? It was some. some it, it was a battle well, for MVP voting that year. and. Uh, who won it that year? He won it he that did year. Win it, I, I but think it was I came in second. Yeah, it was, it was close. Very, very close. Very close. Did you take it as was it a personal matchup with you and Jordan? Not just that finals, but in general when you guys met each other. But because you were the two best at your position, did well, you feel like it was personal battle every time you faced him? To well, Chris, you know when you're a competitor. I mean, we we, we, we weren't uh, enemies. I know he's going to come at me, and guess what? He knows I'm coming yeah, at him. Yeah. I'm going to play my game. If you get in my way, I'm going to knock your nose off. Yeah. Same way with him. We're going to compete. 
But really, it comes down to your teammates. How good? Is, how good is your team? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and 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 I love playing against Michael. I mean, he was the nicest guy, but he's a great competitor. Now he talked a lot of trash on the court, right? He didn't Did ever he, say anything. He didn't to talk me. to you. Okay. Yeah, how's your family? How you doing? Okay. Okay. <laughs> a lot a lot of mutual respect. Yeah. Did you were you a trash talker? Never. Never. Okay. Now, matter of fact, it's hard to be a trash talker when guys are coming up to you saying, "Hey, man, <laughs> my parents are watching. I got family in town. Don't embarrass me." <laughs> It's hard to talk trash to that guy. <laughs> um, n- 1990, I always felt, there are several finals I look back and say, I thought the, the team that didn't win should have won. One of them was, you mentioned Jack Ramsey with Portland. I felt Philadelphia with Dr. J was a better team. Mm-hmm. I thought you guys were better than the bad boys in 90. Um, I felt like at the end of games, you guys kind of, didn't make the they made the plays and you guys didn't. What what was your thought on that series? Well, it's it's all about execution. You got two Hall of Fame point guards, uh, two guards, Joe and Isaiah. Yep. But they're big guys, Lambeer, Mahorn, Sally, Rodman. I thought they made the difference. They wore us down. They got a lot of offensive buckets. They executed better down the stretch as a group. Yeah. And uh, it just didn't. You know, they were just a better team. Chuck Daly was a great coach. Uh, our guys were good. Buck Williams, uh, Kevin Duckworth, really good players. Uh, and, and, you know, just to make it to the NBA Finals, you know what that's like. Oh, yeah. You know, we had yeah. a three-year run where we were one of the best teams in the league, w- winning almost 60 games a year. And so when you put yourself in that position, you're pretty good. And everyone in the league knows that. Oh, and yeah. So it's all about can you get it done when it counts or are you going to come up short? Yeah. Now, now you played in those years in Portland. You faced Magic uh, in, his, in his best. What, what was that like playing against him? Let me just tell you, when you got four number one, five number one picks on your team <laughs> who are the best in the game, how are you going to beat them? Yeah. I mean, think about it. I used to tell Magic, you got James Worthy, 6'9", all, all world. Kareem, uh, you got Byron Scott, one of the best, purest sharpshooters in the world. A.C. Green, Kurt Rambis, Kupchak, McAdoo, Michael Thompson, <laughs> Michael Cooper. I can keep naming them yeah, all on yeah. your team. Yep. I'm coming to play you from Portland, and we got three guys on a 10-day contract. And, 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 and we got an old Maurice Lucas. We got an old Caldwell Jones. <laughs> How are we going to beat these guys? Yeah. And so yeah. they were always uniquely talented. And people talk about these super teams today. Yeah. Well, they were a super team, and oh, so yeah. were the Celtics. And every other team that won back then yep. were super teams. Yep. That's not a new phenomenon. I guess the, the thing people, I, if they don't like it today, they feel like it's player-generated now. Versus, you know, general manager. Yeah, yeah, general yeah. Manager. What's your feel on that? Because a lot of old players don't like these guys, you know, going to play with their. And I find I, I kind of side with the older players. Okay. You know, Chris, if you beat me in the finals and 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 and, and you're a really good player, I'm not gonna say if, if I'm a free agent, I'm going to play with Chris. Yeah. No, no, I'm I'm pissed that you beat me, <laughs> and we want to come back at you. Yeah. That's kind of our mentality. Yeah. I don't want to join your team. We want to beat you. That's what competition is all about. Yeah. But every now things have changed. Things have changed. I think the decision Durant made was a good one. Okay. <laughs> Matter of fact, as you get older, you want to make the game easier. <laughs> Great decision. I think yeah. it's very smart. <laughs> it I definitely I, made it easier I, for I, him. Did it ever. <laughs> I, I know he's never felt so at, ho- at home mm-hmm. in his whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, he can score 30 or he can score 15 and they're going to win. Well, you know what it's it also, though, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, you know what? You can't manufacture a dynasty. Because, like, when LeBron went to Miami, they won two titles. They were great, but not what they thought, right? Not four, not five, not six. But two is good. Two is good. But, but they were in the finals they four, in four years, years in a row. Yeah. That's a dynasty. You think it was a dynasty? Or whether they win or lose, that's a dynasty. Okay, okay. Even the Buffalo Bills, they were a dynasty. <laughs> you got, okay, you got a little lighter <laughs> definition, but I, right. I'll go but with hold it. Up. It's a team sport. It's not individual. Yeah. So you can get 50 points, 40 rebounds, 12 steals. If I miss the two free throws at the end of the game, we don't win. Yeah. Are you not a champion? That uh, It's unfortunate because people look at it that way. You're it's right. Team sport. You're very right. Well, that's one reason people look at Jordan as the GOAT, the greatest mm-hmm. of all time, because he won. They say six and six for six and all that. Which, who do you think is the greatest of all time? Well, I, you know, I, I don't want to take anything away from anybody, but it's obvious when you average 50 points, 25 rebounds, Wilt Chamberlain, okay. who's ever done that? And every year you had Wilt, guess what? You had a chance for a championship. Yeah. I mean, Michael was phenomenal, and, you know, he did really 
you know, one of the best players I've ever played against, but who was ever better than Kareem or, or, or Chamberlain or Julius Irving or mm -hmm. a Bird or Magic? Who was better than those guys? It's hard to say somebody's better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just, I've never bought into that. <laughs> Matter of fact, we're all competitors. You put me on the floor, a lot of them guys got lit up. You feel up. like you're better. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you Did them you up. feel like you were better than Jordan? I, I always felt like there was nobody better if I played the way I should have played. Okay. If I come out and compete, it's going to be very few guys better. And if they are, you shake their hand and say, congrats. But you don't go, you, now you don't look and say, yeah, Michael was better than me. You feel like, uh, <laughs> Let me tell you something. The, what I feel like is I can compete with anybody. I mean, obviously that speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's all about performance. You know, the difference is if you're taking 35 shots and I'm taking 20, you're yeah. going to have more points, yeah. bottom line. But I'm going to make you work and you can't guard me. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, so you look at it from a perspective, I still can do with everything I do, no matter who's on me. What can I stop you from doing? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't stop you from getting 35 points because you're going to get a lot of attempts. But I can make you shoot a worse percentage. Yeah. Make you work for it. And so that's the way you think. You're going to make him earn everything. If a lot of people look at his, when he retired for that year and a half, and you guys won, or yeah. Houston won the ta championship, you there for one of them. Right. Um, do you think you guys would have beat the Bulls? If, um, he had, if Jordan had played? Uh, I, I think... Jordan played in well, he came back. Yeah, he came back with And I think baseball. Orlando swept him, yep, right? Yep, yep, And then we swept so, Orlando. <laughs> so there's your answer. <laughs> there's your answer. <laughs> and not taking nothing away from him. Yeah, they were yeah. phenomenal. But yeah. I actually talk about what happened, not yeah. what could have happened. Okay. That's, you know, that's fair. That's, that's fair. You got to look at it in terms of absolute uh, things that are absolute. Yep. This is what happened. What was it like, that dream team? That dream team was phenomenal. I mean, some of the best players to ever play. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and guys got along so well uh, and, and just made it a great experience. What were – I read and heard the practices were just incredible scrimmages you guys had. Yeah, some of the practices were very competitive. And they should have been because you got all these great yeah. players. But a lot of times we had guys who were injured. Okay. I think Magic Bird, was injured. Was, Bird okay. was injured. Stockton was injured. And so you didn't have a full complement of players the whole time. I, I was injured. I had a right knee uh, okay. that needed surgery since March that I kept putting off until okay. like September. So during that time, I wasn't looking to go hard in okay. practice. <laughs> I'm trying to survive the experience. <laughs> and so when I hear guys talking about how hard the practices were, I don't think I thought that way. Okay. <laughs> I was okay. trying to survive. It. <laughs> but you just compete always, no, no matter if it's practice, the games, or whenever you hit that floor, you come to play. What was, was there something about that experience that stood out to you? What's a great story from that experience that people don't know? Uh, well, just back then, you know, guys really didn't like you. If you're on a different team. Okay, yeah. Because we're competitors. Yeah. We're not supposed to like you. Yeah. We're trying to beat you. And so we really were not good friends. And so some of the guys from the East, I didn't know at all. Like Bird and Patrick and Scotty and Michael. Yeah. I mean... And so from the West, you're on the all-star team at least once a year with him. So you get to know Carl Malone, David Robinson, yeah. John Stockton, Chris Mullen. Yeah. But I tell you what, Magic, but, but the guys from the East, I really didn't know that well. Okay. But matter of fact, we didn't have much conversation because <laughs> you're trying not to get to know him because yeah. I might like him. Now I won't play as hard against him. Okay. okay. So that's the way we thought. Yeah. So we kind of stayed in our own little lane. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Give guys their space and uh, – because we got to compete. It's all about production. Yeah. You know, we're not trying to be friends. We're trying to win. Now, you guys in practice never play West against East? Um, that would have been interesting. Yeah, that, that was the practices. The, the really and so easy. now you got Magic and Michael hyping, you know, going at each other. Yeah, yeah. And they're chirping. Now Magic is getting Michael all hyped up. And guess who's got to guard Michael? <laughs> <laughs> and I used to go, you guys. Because <laughs> I did read. I read that that uh, Jack McCollum wrote a book about the Dream Team. Yeah, and he was saying Magic was talking all this stuff to Them Michael. Too. Yeah, they yeah, were chirping yeah. the whole time, and it was fun to watch. Yeah, he said though that's when Michael basically let Magic and them had to admit, okay, this guy is, is better at this point. Well, My Michael was, was well, Magic didn't even play that year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so what kind of a mission is that? <laughs> he should have been talking. Exactly. That's my point. <laughs> he was. He had no chance. I mean, <laughs> and as good as he was, 
in the uh, 80s and, and yeah, early yeah, 90s. Yeah. I mean, at 92. I mean, he Mike, was an older player. Yeah, yeah, and Michael was a cheese. Yeah. So that's not a that's an obvious statement. You know, <laughs> I got to admit he's better. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Captain Obvious. <laughs> um, we've seen several dream teams now. I think people were comparing 08 with LeBron and Kobe yeah. and, and 12 to you guys. Which one would you think is better? Who I'm biased, obviously. <laughs> 92 aside, that's the best, the only, the first. Never to be duplicated. Yeah, Nobody yeah. could beat that team. But after that team, I, I think the uh, 96 team was pretty good with Shaq, Elijah yeah, Juan. I mean, that's those, true. Those and we're still winning by 42. GP, <laughs> I mean, they had some really good players. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you – um? You talked about super teams. You guys in Houston, when you had Barkley, mm -hmm. it was you, Barkley, and Akeem. And how, you guys obviously didn't get to the championship. How hard is – what was that season like? Was it – did you think it would be easier than it ended up being? Um, or better, I guess? Yeah, well, the three of us at that time were closer to the twilight of our career. We were not, like, in the prime. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I only played uh, two years with Charles, and it was the last two years I played. Okay. Year 14 and 15. And he was probably a year behind me. Yeah, yeah. And, and Elijah one was with him. Yeah. So th these were not our prime years. But with our roles decreased, we were still very good. And so we could do a lot of stuff. Y'all got to I the conference finals? Conference finals, yeah. won 57, 58 games. Or, and, and, and it was easy. We had guys like Kevin Willis, Mario Eli, Eddie Johnson on our team. Yeah. Just a, a good group of veterans. Um, just couldn't quite get over the hump. Uh, Utah beat us. Uh, they had a very good year. It came down to, you know, last second shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we got the short end of the stick. But uh, for the most part, it was fun playing with Charles. It was fun playing with uh, uh, guys like Mario Eli, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Matt Maloney. Uh, yeah, he was y'all point guard for a little while. I absolutely. <laughs> and Hakeem Olajuwon, obviously, that's my brother. Yeah. So, you know, I had so much success. Was it, how hard, though, is it to, maybe because you were older, you guys were older, it was easier, but is it, People, I don't think people understand how difficult it is to get three guys who are used to being the first option to come together and play as teammates. It is very difficult. And then people today don't, you know, but I always, I have this thing. We're talking about Chris Paul, James Harden yeah. playing together. My thing is you get those good players, you put them on a team, they'll find a way to make it happen. That's the reason they're good. Well, they I'm, understand their intelligence yeah. sets them apart. I'm going to jump ahead then and I, cause I want to get to this Rockets team that you, you're the broadcaster, the home games, you broadcast for them. Um, there's talk, LeBron's going to be a free agent and there's talk about him going to the Rockets. And I have wondered, now I was wondering about Chris and James working out together, but I've wondered, man, I don't know how that would work with three guys that like the ball. You don't think it would be a problem if LeBron went there? I think it would be awesome. <laughs> They'd be the best team. Because LeBron mm -hmm. would be like AD. Hey, you don't have to work that hard now. Yeah. you got other teammates that can get it done. Yeah. And so now it's about having fun and enjoying the game as opposed to playing 45 minutes and you got to score 40, 20, and 20 to have a chance to win. That's a hard deal. So it could work. <laughs> it would work. <laughs> it, it'll be great. And LeBron will be better off because of it. It'll extend his career. Okay, okay. Now let's get to these Rockets. Um, they look great. <laughs> they they the best record in the league. Um, are they your favorite right now to win it all? I think the Rockets, with their record and the way they play, they are the favorites. If Chris and James are completely healthy, because those guys get along so well. Their chemistry is great. They have a, a good mix of complementary players. Guys like Trevor Reza, yep. Bamute, P.J. Tucker, Clint, Clint Capella, yeah. Ryan Anderson, Joe Green off the bench, Joe Johnson off the bench. I mean, they've got a lot of talent. Eric Gordon is phenomenal, along with Chris and James. And so you got a lot of guys who can get it done. Now, the game they played the other night against the Spurs, yeah. Spurs slowed them down. They scored 83 points. And the Spurs beat them by, like, 17. Yep. Now, that's... That's what you don't want to see happen. <laughs> With a high-powered offense, you can't slow. The, they got to play at their pace every single night. Now, so you, Golden State, healthy or not, you, got, you think they're better than Golden State? I think it's going to be a great series, and it's all going to be about who's making shots. But Golden State's got some of the greatest shooters to ever play the game. Yeah. And those guys know how to get it done because they've been there. The Rockets, on the other hand, are hungry. They should be more mm. motivated. So that extra motivation forces you to play a little bit harder. You got to want it. And I think they do. James and Chris, 
are, are probably as motivated as any two guys I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Mike D'Antoni has been a good coach for a long time, but he's never had playoff success. Yep. Another motivated person. So you got all these people super motivated to prove they can get it done. I think that's a recipe for success. Do you worry? Because Harden has, I love James Harden. I voted for him for MVP in 2015. Uh, last year, he would have won it if Russ didn't have the triple-double. Um, but he's had his bad moments in these clutch games. Uh, <laughs> last year, game six against the Spurs. Golden State, game five a few years ago. You know, he's had some bad moments. Chris has had some bad moments, too, with the Clippers. Um, are you concerned about that at all? And, well, first of all, I got to tell you, the beard, when you're talking about James Harden, you're talking about a real baller. This guy loves the game. He competes. He beats teams by himself <laughs> on a nightly basis. This guy's incredibly talented. Yeah. He's very smart. He's deceptively athletic. And, and he can really shoot. And so here's a guy who has all those skills but knows how to use it. Mm -hmm. Chris Paul, the same way. So James, I thought he should have been MVP in 2015. Yep. I thought he should have been MVP last year, and he should be obviously MVP this year. Yeah. That's how much I think of James Harden. He's the best player in the game uh, today. You think he's be the best player in the game right now? To this Better year. than this LeBron? Year, this okay. year. Because okay. offensively, he is just a juggernaut. It's hard to – three or four guys stack up to guard him every single night, which leaves those shooters wide open. And when he's not on the floor, let me just tell you something. Them guys don't get the same shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got to look at his overall impact. The, the way he makes his teammates better, the way he plays, Kyle consistently scores 30-plus points, eight seven rebounds, six, seven assists yeah, yeah, every yeah. single night. So this guy's the real deal. Best and, player and, and, in the and world. And LeBron, I love LeBron. Okay. I mean, but, I mean but it's who's, hard. who's the he, best player in the world right now? Well, well LeBron could be the best player every year, kind of <laughs> like Shaq and Kobe when they were yeah, playing. They yeah. could have been the best players every year. But LeBron is the same way. But James, I think, is having just a superior season. When you win – 63, 64, 65 games. I mean, you you are getting it done. Yeah. Nah, he's, he's been incredible. But, but think about this. If Steph Curry or Durant had one less option and they had more more field goal attempts, they would always be in the uh, running for MVP. Yeah. So you got a lot of great players playing at a very high level. But the one thing I look at is efficiency. You know, you can't be the MVP shooting 5 for 25 every night mm -hmm. with seven turnovers. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't care what MVP, what kind of MVP <laughs> is that? I mean, so you got to look at efficiency. <clears throat> what? And, and how good is your team? How, do you, yeah. how good do you make your teammates around you? Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. What, um, when you look at the game today, especially the Rockets, they're like the extreme. I mean, they shoot 43s, more than 43s a game. Mm -hmm. What do you – what – I mean, comparing that to when you played, it's, so, it's almost a different game. It's very much a different game. So until the, uh, the late 80s, the early 90s, we didn't really shoot that many threes. No. Coaches would take you out and say, that's a bad shot. It's inefficient. <laughs> it's too long. Let's get in closer. <laughs> we want to be productive. We're trying to win. Yeah. And then in the 90s, it became like an opportunistic shot. If you got an offensive rebound, kick it out and shoot the three. Mm -hmm. So – but it wasn't a big part of our offense. Nah. Now the Rockets and the Warriors really are responsible because they got guys that can not only shoot the three but make the three. That's the key. Yeah. You got to got to coach to your level of talent. Them guys can all shoot. Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, probably the best shooting backcourt ever in the yeah, history of the I NBA. Agree. And then you bring Durant. Come on, those guys can really get it done. Now the Rockets, now their offense is designed to shoot 45, 50 threes a night. And when they're making them, they're hard to beat. But when teams run them off that line and they don't have a, 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 a real post-up threat, they, thro they struggle. But especially with no Chris Paul because he's Mr. Midrange. He's the best well, that's mid the, yeah, player in the one game. Mid-range guy. That's why they got him. Yeah. And so they, they have a good blend of mid-range. Uh, the the post-up is their high pick and rolls with Capella going over the top. I would consider that their post-up because post he's good at that. But James Harden, I mean, he just creates so many problems for the defense. Other guys are going to have shots they wouldn't normally get. Yeah. And so th th that's a team that's going to be hard to stop. Do you have a problem? I, I kind of do. I'm a, I'm a little old school in this re regard. I, I miss – I think the game is better with a mix of threes, mid-range, and post. Not all one or all the other. So – I, I think they need to – I just don't like the lack of great big men 
of post players in today's game. What, what's the your thoughts on The absence of the good post players as a guard who posted a lot, I don't even understand it. How, how do you not go to the most efficient shot on the mm-hmm. floor? The closer you get, the, the easier the shot, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, the, you, some guys can't get to that point, and so they have to make other, other arrangements on how to score. Uh, for me, I truly, you know, the, the notion that our philosophy is to get all the way to the basket or shoot a three, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I, my philosophy is to score by any means necessary, <laughs> any way I can. I don't care if I got to get on my knees and throw it up. Yeah, I want to yeah, score. Yeah. But but the, the the fact that someone can have a philosophy is amazing to me in the game of basketball. That's what they, that's you what better, they believe. You, you got to be opportunistic and take whatever you can get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to hit you with a few things. I, I want to hold you to – I want you to give me an answer, please. <laughs> I, I'm please. Um – Jordan or LeBron, everybody debates that. Who you got? Ooh. You can't go wrong. Give, give me both. I mean, no, I, 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 please. Go, I'm begging. I love them both because, you know, they're some of the greatest players to ever play the yes, game. Yes. And so you can't go wrong. Different eras. I hate comparing eras. But uh, two phenomenally gifted guys who are great guys. So, you know, you can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to try to give you a few guys in the same era. Uh-huh. Who, who's better, Isaiah Thomas or John Stockton? Whew, that's a tough one. Isaiah, 11 years, 11 All-Stars. Stockton, one of the you know, toughest-minded players, yeah. healthy, always competed. Um, but if you had to pick one in their prime, Isaiah, because I'm going to give Isaiah the nod because he got two championships. Yeah. And even though it's a team game, I think Isaiah was the engine that ran the Pistons. He had, a, he had a lot more talent to work with than, than John because John had called and, yeah. ve- and very little else. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to give the edge slightly to Isaiah. Okay. Uh, Charles Barkley or Carl Malone? Oh, I know. That's, you know, two really good players. I'm going to give the edge to Carl for, for longevity, um, productivity, and uh, just, just, you know, when guys played against Carl, they were psyched out. Power mm-hmm. forwards had a bad day. <laughs> they, they had Carl Malone-itis. And so even though Charles was a nightmare, uh, he, didn't, he didn't give him that kind of – he didn't have that kind of aura like Carl Malone. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Magic or Bird? Mm. <clears throat> Two of my favorites. Uh, you can't go wrong. It's, you know, <laughs> those guys are so good. I mean, they kind of uh, – I grew up watching them. So they're, they're the two guys I kind of patterned some of my game okay. after. So I love them both. It's, it, I could never pick that. I love them both. Okay. Uh, That's like saying which one of your kids you love the most. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're probably biased in this one, but uh, Akeem or Tim Duncan? Ooh, oh, I love Timmy, but Akeem was the man. That, that's my brother. But Akeem, he, he, defensively, he could take over a game defensively. Guys would be scared to death to drive to the basket. Mm-hmm. And if they drove the ball, I just used to go at the free throw line and wait. The ball would always come back and start a <laughs> fast break. That's how reliable he was. <laughs> I mean, that's, he's one of the best defensive players I've ever played with. Yeah. So yeah. forget about the offense and the dream shake and all that. Yeah. He could just beat you defensively. And, and, and Timmy, as good as he was, I love him. Mr. Fundamental Excellence, uh, Tim, I liked everything he stood for, the way he played the game, yeah. the professionalism, uh, his, his character. I got nothing but great things to say about Timmy, but – I'm going to go with Elijah one. All right, all right. Um, you're commissioner of the big three. Yeah. Um, what, what led you to want to do that? Commissioner of the big three, I was a coach last summer. And Ice Cube and Jeff Quantinitz, yep. great guys. Their vision of the big three is phenomenal. Uh, it's, it's, it's the most fun I've had being a part of a basketball league since I left the NBA. Really? Okay. Yeah, I love it. And, and uh, you know, to be a part of that three-on-three action, which is the fundamentals of where we all came from. Yep. And to see it live in, in a professional setting is brilliant. I think uh, Ice Cube's vision, uh, he beat the NBA to, <laughs> to the punch. Yeah, It's very popular. People love it all over the world. It's broadcast this year in 54 countries. Really? Wow. And it's growing each and every day. We, we got about 90 players, uh, ex-NBA players, fighting for about only 19 spots. Really? So... So it's guys just, are dying to get in this. Exactly. Would you have played in a big three? Absolutely. You know? I, I would have loved it because yeah. I'm, you know, the one on one. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and the team, the three on three. That's that half court. I don't have to run. <laughs> Come on, as an old guy, you love that. 
And so, you know, guys like Paul Pierce and Kobe, they should come on and join us because this is too much fun. If you're a baller and you love the game, three on big three is for you. How serious are guys taking it? Like, they, they really go. Are you hardest. kidding? It's like the NBA games. These guys are the friends off the court, but when they hit that court, when they hit the court, I mean, I've never seen guys stretching and doing yoga with physios and getting prepared for each and every game. I mean, this is serious business. It's competitive. Are, are there things you want to add to, you know, enhance the league? Like what things, if, if there are any at this point? Well, you know, as commissioner of the Big Three, uh, you know, my job is simply to just continue to, to kind of work on the fan and, and, and the player experience okay. to make it a good one, okay. to kind of work on a few strategic corporate partnerships uh, to kind of enhance and grow, help grow the game. Uh, but 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 Cube's vision is phenomenal. This is a great league with great rules yeah. and uh, good people working. I mean, great leadership. We got some of the best uh, people on staff and, and, and coaching in the big three. It's just been a pleasure to, to be there. All right. I enjoy All right. it tremendously. I, I look forward to each and every day. Great, great. Last question. Do you remember the lyrics to Bust the Bucket? Bust the Bucket? Bust the Bucket. What was that, the Rockets? Blazers. Blazers. Oh, my goodness. Was that off Bust the Blues? Rassar, you going way in there. <laughs> Come on, dude. Were you rapping? I, was it, was, Terry Porter. Was Terry Porter was rapping. Oh, Jerome Kersey and Terry Porter. <laughs> I don't think I You had I, nothing to do with I that. I got huh? no skills. <laughs> none. None. <laughs> <laughs> well, Clyde, it was great talking Always with you. Always a pleasure. Yeah, good man. You got a lot, a lot of, of history. <laughs> yeah, I took you back. I took you way back. But uh, good luck with the big three. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to this year. Last year was great. I'm really looking forward to this year because the games will be live yeah. now. Games are live. You got guys like Amari Stoudemire, yep. Drew Gooden, uh, Carlos Boozer, Nate Robinson, all these big players along with the guys we had last season coming back. And so this is this is a lot of fun, a lot of competition. You, to play in the big three, you got to bring your game. This yeah. is not a this is not a bunch of old guys. These are guys that can still compete at a very high level. Well, you know what was interesting last year? Some of the best players uh -huh. were guys that only had a quote unquote cup of coffee in the NBA. Yeah. So they were still kind of young, you know, like early thirties, mid thirties. Rashard McCann. Yeah. Al yeah. Harrington. I mean, those guys are phenomenal. Yeah. So <laughs> Deshaun you, Stevenson. How do how do the older like uh, like guys who were legends? Okay, but they're a little older. And they're playing against these young guys that weren't that good in the NBA, but they're younger, so they might be better at this point. How did the, the legendary guys, how do they look at that? Well, they know they got a lot of pride. And they don't want these young guys to, to kind of show them up. Yeah. And so it's, that's what makes them play harder. But, got, you know, we got some of the greatest coaches. When I talk to Julia Servin or George Gervin or Rick Barry or Gary Payton. I mean, that's what we talk about. Yeah. These guys come to play. They don't care who you were in the NBA. They care who you are now <laughs> in the big three. <laughs> so you got to bring your game. All right, let me ask you this. So you coached last year. I, I mean, it's three on three. How much strategy is there really? In <laughs> There's a lot of strategy. Is there? The high pick and rolls, you got to make sure you got to shoot on the weak side. Otherwise, they're going to collapse because we have no illegal defense. Okay. You got a 14 second shot clock and, and it's moving. First one at 25 is halftime. Yeah. Game is 50. You got to win by two. So the games go quickly. And if you got three point shooters and even four point shooters, yeah, yeah. which really makes our game stand out from anyone else, we got the four point shot. And we got guys that can make that shot. <laughs> so you got to extend your defense way out, which leads a lot of room to go to work. Now, last year there were some guys, Terrell Owens. Well, I, 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 think, I think Ice Cube set it up, and, and Jeff, to the point where you had to be an ex-NBA player. Mm -hmm. So you had to have pro pedigree. Uh, but but I, I don't know if they'll open it up for, for tryouts if a guy's that good. Yeah. He's really, yeah. really that good. You may want to think about it, yeah. but that's going to be up to them. Wow. Yeah, because, you know, Terrell Owens is a good athlete. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if he's he good pretty, enough to play with these guys. But. Yeah. At this age, maybe, but <laughs> not obviously not when they're younger, you know. Right. But, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. All right. I know you got to roll. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Always great. a pleasure. All Continue right. success. Yeah. Thank you.